Yes, yes, yes. No, no, no. Wait, I think I'm okay with this. Okay, okay, enough jokes for now. What's good, y'all? Hope you're having a fantastic day, and welcome back to another Kingdom Hearts video. In a previous video, I talked a little bit about the potential future of Sora and what purpose he has to play in the upcoming saga, considering he really doesn't have a whole lot to do with it. However, I want to play off that a little bit in today's discussion in that he has so little to do with it, in fact, as of right now, that he very well may no longer be the main character of this upcoming saga. <laughs> No, I know. Shocker, right? No, 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 no. In fact, we may just be shifting the focus completely, and I would say we already have been recently to a different character, particularly one that is significantly underdeveloped. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's Kyrie. We're talking about Kyrie. <laughs> <laughs> now, if you were to ask me if I think we're going to be getting a Kyrie game anytime soon, I would be so inclined to say that not only are we getting one, we're practically just waiting for an announcement at this point. Please, 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 please. But how does Kyrie go from being one of the most shafted characters in terms of main characters to front and center stage? To understand that, we have to look at the story so far as a whole. In terms of the story, the Xehanort saga is finished. It has ended, concluded, more or less been put to rest. And with that, in turn, all of the characters that were introduced and were a part of it are more or less finished as well. The Wayfinder Trio. Even though they technically have a role as of the moment, it is a significantly minor one. Let's be honest, they're in no way, shape, or form gonna find Sora in their travel to the Realm of Darkness. At most, maybe they find a small clue that the crew could use, but overall, that's it. They're not gonna show up too frequently again and fall into a Restoration Committee background sort of support role for a while. They've gotten their conclusion in the Keyblade War. They've gotten their story rounded back around full circle. The Seesaw Trio as well, same thing. These groups all have had their stories concluded. Let them rest. Lord knows they deserve it. So in terms of our main characters that are moving on to play a pivotal role, it's gonna be the Destiny Trio and Co. And in that trio, there is only one character, in my opinion, that hasn't had their character fully developed and finished off. And that character is Kairi. Now of course there's always room for improvement and development, but Sora and Riku are more or less have been thoroughly explored from the start of the series all the way to where we are now. Just look at the games. They've quite literally been a part of and a main focus in every single game from start to finish, with each game diving in and exploring exploring them as characters to various degrees. Numerous of them really hammering into their growth as characters significantly more than others, but more or less they all contribute, with constant flashbacks and constant flushing out of their past, which I specifically want to talk about in a bit, don't forget. Examples being Kingdom Hearts 1, Chain of Memories, and Dream Drop Distance being Sora and Riku, 358 in 2 days and Recoded, each pertaining to one or the other with Riku's struggle of conquering the darkness and Sora being able to carry the burden of all the people connected to him. I'm not gonna go any further, I'm sure you get the point. But in each segment where she existed, Kairi's always kinda just in there. Hell, even in Kingdom Hearts 3, again, Sora and Riku were the main focuses of growth. What little growth Kairi got was through a couple of cutscenes that ultimately didn't show anything, because the majority of it ended up happening off screen. She hasn't really undergone any strong, heavy, deep dive character development like the others. Kairi's always been Kairi. That is until recently, with the addition of Remind and Melody of Memories. Remember earlier I said I wanted to touch base on Sora and Riku's past specifically? Why Riku was able to wield the Keyblade? Well, because Sarah passed it down to him. The door that opened throwing Destiny Islands into the Realm of Darkness, how Sora found Aqua by returning to Destiny Islands, where Riku notices the door and Aqua reaches it through the consumed Destiny Islands. These are just a few, but not only did seeing those scenes flush them out as characters, which again is always appreciated because it gives us a little dive into their background when they were younger, but more importantly, they all contributed to the overall story. Kairi, on the other hand, hasn't really had anything really revealed about her past, let alone contributing to the overall story. Until now, again with melody and memory and whatnot. The one thing that we did have from Kairi's past though up until this point of somewhat super important relevance being the cutscene from Kingdom Hearts 1 with Kairi and her grandmother. Let us read the story together. Long ago, people lived in peace, bathed in the warmth of light. Everyone loved the light. Then people began to fight over it. They wanted to keep it for themselves. And darkness was born into their hearts. Darkness spread, swallowing the light and many people's hearts. It covered everything, and the world disappeared. But small fragments of light survived, in the hearts of the children. 
With these fragments of light, children rebuilt the lost world. It's the world we live in now. The true light sleeps deep within the darkness. That's why the worlds are still scattered. Divided from each other. But someday, a door to the innermost darkness will open. And the true light will return. So listen child, even in the deepest darkness, there will always be a light to guide you. Believe in the light and darkness will never defeat you. Your heart will shine with its power and push the darkness away. Do you understand, Kyrie? Now, if we cross-reference this with the Xehanort Saga, this story really doesn't point to anything specifically. At best, it's just saying light and darkness fight over the light, but that's kind of a given in every game, so that can't be it. So what is the purpose of this story? I'll tell you one thing that gives this story purpose. One name, Ava. Okay, 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 now just humor me for a bit here. If Kairi's grandmother is Ava, this story takes on a completely and significantly more obvious perspective. This is the story of Kingdom Hearts Union Cross. People live in peace, bathed in the warmth of light. People began to fight over it, and they wanted to keep it to themselves. This is talking about all the different players from the different unions, the spark in which all the unions became obsessed with collecting all the lux for themselves. The darkness spread, swallowing the light in many people's hearts. It covered everything, and the world disappeared. This is quite literally the outcome of Daybreak Town. But small fragments of light survived in the hearts of children. With these fragments of light, children rebuilt the lost world. Of course, referencing the dandelions. Skull, Brain, Lorium, Ven, Alreina, who isn't technically a dandelion, but she might as well be counted at this point, and specifically Ephemir, who quite literally rebuilt the lost world into Skylad Kylum. Here's where things start to get a little bit interesting though. This next line, the true light sleeps deep within the darkness, but someday a door to the innermost darkness will open and the true light will return. What could this be talking about? Well, piecing together all the details we have up until this point about this story being the retelling of the events of Union Cross, if we continue to follow the pattern, what is the only thing we have to be afraid of? The master of masters as well as the true darknesses. The true light sleeps deep within the darkness. The but true light, and I use that loosely because we know exactly how this man's mind works, is the Master of Masters. During the events of Union Cross, the Master just up and vanished, remaining dormant wherever he may lie while all the events that we know of unfolded, watching through the gazing eye. Meanwhile, back to Union Cross times, the Dandelions are trying to figure out their escape route with the pods. Almost everyone gets out through one means or another. Everyone except one person. That person being you, the player character. In a last ditch attempt to guarantee everyone's safety, you tricked the deadly darknesses into thinking that you were on their side, forcing Ephemir's hand to send you into another realm through a portal. There, you reveal to them that you were never on their side and lock them inside with you, driving them rampant and where you would soon meet your fate as well. Someday, the door to the innermost darkness will open and the true light will return. At the end of the scene, we don't see any of the darknesses anywhere near you, and as much of a badass as I like to think my character was, I don't think they were able to tangle with all those darknesses at once and make it out. Uh, sorry, poor choice of words there. You know what I meant. Anyways, this means that they are still very much alive, and presumably here. Someday, the door will open and they will return. Well, at least I hope they are, because if not, then otherwise mine and everybody else's time that was piecing together what the next arc is going to be about having to do with this kind of just thrown out the window, which I would definitely be okay with. I'm here for the ride one way or another. Regardless, it goes without saying that as soon as there's a scent of the darkness's musty odor in the wind, the Master of Masters is going to wake up and he is instantly going to be on their case. The true light will return. Look at when our character is explaining their plot to foil the darkness. Ephemir locked it on that side and I locked it on this side. You can't leave without my key. If they planned on escaping from the inside. But what about the outside? They may not have a form, but they can't escape. Not without a keyblade. That much is certain. Now, you could argue with the wording they meant specifically the player character's keyblade and Ephemir's, but for two decades, the whole gimmick of the keyblade was that it could unlock everything. So that would kind of be meh if that was the case. We've seen it unlock regular keyholes. We've seen it unlock magical keyholes. We've seen it unlock sleeping worlds. We've seen it unlock literal hearts. And you mean to tell me it can't 
unlock this measly little lock here. Anyways, as we know, Ava was tasked with making sure Keyblade wielders survived, a task given to her specifically by the Master. So Keyblades are few and far between, it's just a matter of who and when. Uh, who is someone that knows of these potentially super deadly darknesses? Someone that knows where they were sent to? Perhaps someone who's been tasked with constantly observing everything that unfolded? Perhaps someone who just recently got their Keyblade back and now has the power to do so? Hmm. Perhaps. Moving on with the story, she continues to tell Kyrie, listen child, even in the deepest darkness there will always be a light to guide you. Believe in the light and the darkness will never defeat you. In this cutscene, we see her back at Radiant Garden. You know who else we knew was there at Radiant Garden during Kyrie's youth? And what this statement sounds awfully familiar to? Xehanort in his speech to Kyrie in Melody of Memories. There will always be a light to guide you. Your heart will resonate with that of a Keyblade wielders. Where else would he get this information? from. This is something too specific to have just discovered in research. And even if it was, for it to be Kairi specifically would mean she was experimented on for research, but as we see in her flashbacks, Kairi lived a free and happy life in the castle, not kept underground like the rest. So that's not the case. Now we've come to find out that the Keyblade wielder did indeed turn out to be Riku. Yes, Riku not Sora. Sora did not have the power nor was he a Keyblade wielder until this very moment. And even then Tetsuya Nomura stated before it was Riku's Keyblade, not his. Sora did not officially undergo the Keyblade inheritance ceremony until of this moment in Kingdom Hearts 3, which by this point obviously is just for aesthetics, but I just thought this was cool how he finally underwent the ceremony and not only was the Keyblade given to him the Keyblade, but it was also Master Xehanort that deemed him worthy. It's just a cool little detail that I really like. Means nothing, overall. Means nothing. Kyrie was sent on her mission ages before this. They met and became friends way before the islands even fell into darkness. And I know this gets forgotten in the wind because Sora and Kyrie's cuteness is so adorable, but Riku is Kyrie's friend too. Even though they really didn't talk to each other too much in Kingdom Hearts 3 for some odd reason. I don't know, I guess Riku was too focused on himself, literally, if I remember. He succeeded her mission in finding the Keyblade wielder. That being said, the light that guided her was indeed Sora's. That is undeniable. Even if it wasn't what initially led her to Destiny Islands, it became her pillars to guide her through the darkness. Kairi has always been guided by Sora. The darkness has never defeated her. Why? because Sora was there to save her each time. When she lost her heart, where did it go for refuge? Sora. More recently, when Xehanort defeated Kairi, who brought her back? Sora. Kairi is bound to Sora. Wherever he goes, she will follow, guided by the light. And it's not even just Kairi. Sora has been the pivotal key of reconnecting everybody, saving all of the lost hearts. And just like Kairi, we all have to believe in the light of Sora to guide us to a hopefully better end than the current route that we are on in saving the Forte. In the coming arc, Kairi has become the sole pillar holding everything together. The same way Sora was the key to everything. What once was Reconnect Kingdom Hearts is now an oath to return. Of course, on the surface it's pretty obvious. This is pertaining to getting Sora back, right? Wrong! A certain someone vanished years ago. Gone without a trace. A certain familiar face. A uh, mask? G uh, voice? That's right. Ava. I remember you saying something about Kairi's grandma being Ava, you kinda just glossed over that. But what exactly does she have to do with anything? Where has she been this entire time, and if so, who was it that she made this promise to? And above all, where does Kairi come into play here? How does Lushu getting his Keyblade back mean the return of the true darknesses? All will be answered, my dear friends. In the next video, yes, I know I hate to do the good old bait and switch, but this video is getting pretty lengthy and there is such a thing as too much information. And to prevent everyone watching the video from bobbing their heads like a newborn baby because it is just too much, I'm splitting this into two videos because we got a whole heaping dish to dive into in the next one. Yo, 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 what is good? If you made it this far, you made it to the end of the video and that means you must like it, right? Right? If you like this theory slash discussion video, go ahead and check out some of my other videos. I'll link to the playlist or something somewhere on the screen. I'm, I don't know. I'm new to this. Also, where's my Cold Lyoko theme Kingdom Hearts world? What, you said it's not Disney? Does it look like I fucking care? Moana, Psych, Encanto, bye bye. Treasure Planet? Um. Look, all I'm saying is they did it with Tron, they can do it with this. Hell, the enemies even somewhat look like Heartless. Anyways, it's been Vel. I love your faces, and I hope you have a fantastic day. I'm out. Peace.